Hello, Moto America fans. Welcome to this latest edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Bice. I am Bice, joined by our communications manager for Moto America, Paul Carruthers, to my right. And we are at the Circuit of the Americas, and it is hotter than hell. But uh, And luckily, I've never been to hell, so I don't really know. But it's like in the, in the hundreds anyway. Um, He's been told and, to go to hell, though. And talk about heat. The heat is on right now because we have three riders from the Mission King of the Baggers Championship. They all ride Harley Davidsons. One of them's a factory rider, and the other two are factory supported. We've got James Rispoli, we've got Kyle Wyman, the factory rider, and we've got Hayden Gillum. And uh, I don't know. This is going to be interesting. We've never had three three guys on at the same time. What do you think, Paul? How are we going to do this? Ask like Kyle Wyman. I would like to ask you a question. I think that's probably the only way you can do it. Yeah, but you it's funny. It? Well, did you say that they're only three points apart? Oh, tell us the scenario. Well, they're three points apart. He, he, Hayden Gillum, in case you can't see he, him pointing. He, he's leading, and these two are tied for second, and they're only three points behind. It's, it's three huge. points. Three yeah. guys, three points. Yeah. And there are two rounds left, but we've never been to Circuit of the Americas before. This is a, this is a first time. Um, Kyle's been on this track. Hayden's. James, James has been on it on the bagger. Yeah. Oh, testing. You haven't been yeah. here at all. I, I, no, but I've you've been raced here. here. Yeah. No, but you, why didn't you come and test with him? Uh, we were testing Road America for the Dunlop test before uh, the race. Yeah. Okay, so you guys tested this year then. Yeah, well, that guy gets plenty of laps during the weekend. We don't need him any more laps. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, James, I want to start with you because I was going to say I knew for a fact you've never raced on this track, but you've been on this track fairly recently. Yeah, this year we tested when Harley Davidson came here and tested. We were thankfully enough allowed to come with them. But I'd, I'd tell you right now, if we weren't, we would be in really bad shape. This place is really tough. Tough because of turn one? Because it's so long. No, it's just technical. The whole, the, the first half of the track and the back half are both super technical in their own regards you know the first half is just flowy and if you miss one mark you could be six seven tenths off especially on a bagger and if you screw it up and in the back half it's really really tough because it's way tighter than i thought when you see it on like moto gp and stuff like that it doesn't look as tight but you get out on a bagger it's the only thing i've rode and it's like i'm like like you try to there's no re there's a reason why people aren't like dive bombing up in some of these corners because you just can't make it like you just physically can't turn around the, the, the corner tight enough. So it's going to be a really interesting race. And it's, uh, again, yeah, like if we didn't test here, we would be in really bad shape. Well, so let me ask you this, Kyle. I am intimidated just by turn one because of the idea that you go up that hill. It helps you slow down a little bit maybe. But you almost turn back on yourself. Can you turn a bagger to go into turn one? No, they the just way? rode straight into town. Well, that's what I'm wondering. I mean, no. how do you get it back around? <laughs> Turn one's the the best corner for the bagger because it's uphill and it gravity helps you slow the thing. Okay. So honestly, it's it's one of the better corners. The tight ones are definitely a little bit tough for the baggers, but yeah, I mean that turn one's not bad. Turn twelve is all downhill braking, so you got to really make sure you hit your mark there. But no, it's a it's a tricky track, uh, like especially with gearing, especially because there's so many different sizes of corners that it's totally a compromise kind of no matter what so that was kind of the aim for our test was a lot of gearing work but yeah at least we've had our days here earlier this year that was the the one track we chose to test the one moto Amer moto america track that we're allowed to choose so we chose this one because baggers have never been here so yeah and james came along and and we had a good couple days all right two questions for for hayden the the fact that you didn't come here and test do you, is your, are your bikes close enough that you can just start at least with what James, I, I mean, gearing, can you, or even, I guess you yeah, could with gearing. Yeah, like gearing will be, gearing will go off of what they tested with. And, uh, but I mean, it really, other than that, it's, it's going to be quite a bit different from whenever they tested here. Cause it was quite a bit cooler. Like it's hot. It's going to be super greasy and everything. The bikes are going to work a lot different than what they did. I'm assuming at their test, but I don't know, they're baggers too. So they might, you there's such a broad window of how these bikes, how good, how these bikes work in, at least for me, like I can do big suspension changes and can do the same lap time. It just is the way it, the way I get the lap time is different. So like, I don't know, I'll, the gearing's the biggest one, the, the rest of it. I mean, by the time I get on the bagger, I'll have already been on the track twice. So <laughs> I'll be ready to go. I'll be warmed up and everything, but. Uh, Your leathers won't even fit anymore. You'll be so skinny. That's I need it. 
<laughs> so <laughs> you're three points ahead, but with five points between first and second, three you might as well all be tied, right? I oh mean, yeah. Do yeah, because three three points is the difference between second and third. Like right. And none of we're we're hoping that none of us are fighting for second and third. We're hoping we're all fighting for the win. So Right. And I think that's what people also understand is it's not just you three guys because there's fast guys, Bobby Fong, for example, that could win at any time or get in the mix and obviously Tyler O'Hara and so it's it's not just between you three guys. There's other guys that can make a huge difference in actually the outcome of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and we've got four races left. We've got True. four races left, and uh, if if Kyle goes on a run like he's been able to do, that's going to be obviously make a put a damper on it. But uh, I don't know. The Vance and Hines bikes are working pretty good. I'm hoping we can put a good fight up. Now, with the way this track is, it's fast. It's a long lap. Is it going to, the heat, is it going to be, I mean, does, does engine management come into it? Like, do you think like, oh shit, you know, I need to like, maybe not give it full stick here or whatever, because, or you just do it and, and hope for the best. I'm always full stick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, I think anytime we're on the track, it's going to be wide open. I don't think you're going to be managing really anything, but, um, it is hot, you know, they, they are air cooled, but. You know, the factory as well as the Vance and Heinz boys have done everything possible they can to make them last, you know, as much as we can. And, you know, who knows, there might be some strategy involved in there. But I don't really see in our class, you we don't really have gaps to be able to roll out and roll off. You know, like if, if you're not moving forward, someone's catching you, especially in the top four. And there's obviously no team orders per se. I mean, even even with you i mean these two guys can't aren't going to gang up on you or anything like that because oh I mean, yeah we are yeah i mean oh yeah we are it's he's probably, got a different he's got a different color bike than us if, if, you think, <laughs> if you think about it i don't know what anybody's contract situations are like but you guys probably have more to gain by beating each other than he does if that makes sense I mean, at the end of the day, I think, you know, everybody wants the number one and it's a rider market. If you got the number one, you can kind of dictate a little bit more. And I mean, I'm sure Kyle's more secure than the rest of the grid, uh, just having the number one before and doing what he's done with Harley Davidson. So uh, I'm sure me and Hayden have a little bit more to gain for getting the number one plate. But at the end of the day, man, you can think about that, but it's, we still have four races. We've got two really good ones this weekend and I mean, a lot can happen. You know, Bobby's 40-something points back, but if he wins the next four, like, it gets dangerous. Right. Like, it doesn't matter if you finish second. It's still dangerous, you know? Like, Kyle, um, so how much do you talk to these guys, and how much do they talk to you? As, as far as <laughs> well, what? just yeah. like On after, the golf course? No, what? after a session. I mean, what I'm getting at is the fact that you're the factory rider, but it seems like it's pretty seamless in terms of what Vance and Hines gets parts wise from Harley. It's very, it's a very close knit organization, and there's not a huge difference that much. But yeah. you're the factory guy, so do you guys think? as a team or do you, do you guys think as competitors? Um, no, I mean, like we've never shared data between right. like the factory team and the Vance and Heinz team, but obviously the bikes are very similar because, you know, this year, especially they've gone to a numerous amount of parts that we run, you know, between the front end, back end, swing arm, all that stuff. So, um, I think that's, uh, um, you know, their success this year is a testament to, you know, Harley Davidson being supportive and, you know, given making those parts available for, for other teams. And obviously Vance and Hines knows how to build an engine. So I don't think there's really been any, any sharing or support on the engine side. Vance and Hines already knows what they're doing in that department. So yeah, they've gotten pretty damn close, if not level terms with us, as far as that goes. And, you know, for, it just is, is going to make good racing. Cause I think the bikes are pretty close at this point. Um, but yeah, kind of at this point, obviously Harley okay. wants the factory bike to win the championship. So, you know, I think everybody's kind of head down at the moment. Right. So I'm going to ask all three of you guys this, and this may be something you can't share. I don't know, but I'm just going to go for it and ask. As I understand it, you're the Harley Davidson factory, hey, HD Screaming Eagle team. You, you change the engine after every session? No. You don't? Change the engine? Take the engine out. No. I've heard this. No. No, no. Okay. No. <clears throat> okay. So you don't put a fresh engine in for every session? No, there, there are times we put a fresh engine in Saturday night for Sunday. Okay. But for the most part, we don't 
No, yeah, we don't have too it's many big, issues. It's a big process, right? Like job. it takes it. Yeah. Like there's there's not enough time between sessions I think to be able to do it. I'm pretty. I think there's six bikes that do it Saturday to Sunday. Yeah. I mean, Indians included. Yeah. Okay. There, there's a lot of bikes that from Saturday to Sunday, and I don't think it's. I mean, I can't speak for Vance and Hines, but it's not anything because we have to. It's just because we've been in the championship hum since race one, and you know. Terry Vance and the Vance and Hines want to give us every opportunity that we can to continue with trying to be in the championship hunt. And it's just a due diligence thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, We've we've run like, you know, we'll do three test days on one engine, which is like two and a half race weekends worth of mileage and not have failures, but it's more of just a, you know, precautionary it's it's, it's race, it's race situation. And, you know, you just have to kind of protect everything you possibly can. So yeah, we have the, the means to put another engine in it for Sunday, we do so. Okay. Yeah, but it's a big it's a big process. Like I know the the Vance and Hines guys are at the track till like twelve thirty Saturday nights changing engines. Mm-hmm. It's it's a it's a big process. Right. And they're I mean the the engines themselves are like one hundred seventy pounds. Like it's <laughs> it's a and then there's so many. It's not like a regular sport bike engine. Like there's there's cases inside of cases mm-hmm. inside of cases and there like there's so much stuff going on inside of them yeah it's, it's crazy watching yeah if you did something early in the day session one you're probably not making it for session two yeah. like you could they i mean they could do it but it's to do it right make sure everything's good gucci it's i think we've seen that before too where guys it, don't make it's yeah. it's a thrash and i mean they do it pretty the other thing is is what's tough is is you know we race late so they yeah. don't get started till late. So it's like a big, it's a big ordeal. So we just try not to. A zero now would be, you know, bad, devastating. Yeah. Do you guys still notice and does it surprise you that there's still like, it always surprises me that there's still negativity from some people <laughs> about the class when it's like, it's What's proven. What's in those bags? It's, yeah. I mean, That's how so... often do you get sick of answering that question, right? <laughs> but it's, it's, it's just funny because it's, it's proven to be so successful and, it's grown every year, and yet there's still people that just, like, get rid yeah. of it. And it, it's not like we make them watch it. I mean, they're here. It's not like there's not super bikes because of this. It all works, yeah. right? Well, does, is that, do you find that surprising? Well, or? I mean, you just kind of have to have the right mentality around that because, you know, some of the most popular things in the world are some of the most polarizing things in the world. Right. And when you have people talking about things, you know, you get – the five star review reviews and the one star reviews. You know, we don't want any three star reviews. We want fives and ones, because that's what's going to just drive this thing into the, the place it's been and the place we think it's going to go. Hmm. So yeah, I kind of let it roll off my back at, at this point. All right, so I got one for you, all three of you guys. I'll start in order. So we'll start with James. Tell us about the the King of the Bagger Challenge. Do you like it? And if you do, tell us why. If you don't, tell us why you don't. Well, I hate it because I finished second all the time. I haven't got a dime. Like, <laughs> yeah, but you finished second all the time in the other ones, it too. It sucks. <laughs> I know. We got to start winning something. So it is so, one of those deals that if you don't win it, it's why nothing. did I even do it? Somewhat. I mean, it's tough. I, it's not tough like physically, but it's just like strategy wise you know you do qualifying you go right into it and sometimes it's it helped it can help you and sometimes it's not um you know i i think it's cool i do like having that extra little race because i think like right now we go out in the morning and we go out at, at night so it's nice to have like a little bit of something to race it's, it gets pretty boring yeah um the rest of it but uh other than that i think it's cool i think i like the i just like racing so yeah. if we're bar banging for money or bar banging for points like Let's, I want to race. I yeah. want to race these guys hard, and I just want it to be close and fun. And afterwards, you know, high five and whatever, like we we're riding hundreds. Yeah, there's a little bit of money on the line, but maybe if they could spread it to second and third, it would be great. Kyle, yay or nay on the challenge? Uh, it's, yeah, flip a coin, <laughs> right? It can be the best thing, especially if you win. Uh, it can it can be an opportunity to try a change that you wouldn't normally normally throw at the bike for a points-paying race which we've done a number of times where it's like, yeah, that was the wrong way, but it was just a challenge, you know? So um, it can be, you know, an opportunity to show your cards before the race, which can be a positive or a negative. You know, if I've won a challenge by, you know, building a gap, you know, straight away, then that's probably a good thing because it shows what I can do. And that's kind of what I've always tried to do with the challenge. But, um, they're kind of stressful at the same time because you just, 
you kind of don't know who's going to just show up with the red mist <laughs> either and, and really want to go for it. But it's definitely, you know, going back to the kind of engine changes or, you know, fixing crash bike, you know, you don't want to put your team on the back foot over, you know, a big check, you know, because usually we've got our points paying race about four hours after that. So, you know, you, you trash a bike, you're going to put those guys on the back foot. Hayden. Ah, I mean, it's laps. I like I like laps. I I like to use it like the first couple laps for me this year. I've, I've struggled with getting going, and you know, coming off of stock or coming off a of sewer bike, like it takes me a few laps to get it back. And so, like, I like it just because I can kind of practice that. But but also, you know, I'm kind of on the side with James too. I I haven't won one yet, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a waste of time. But. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's cool. I like it. And, it, and you know, it it it, it kind of gives a little preview of, of what the race could be later in the day, too. And and like Kyle said, you can try stuff, you know, whatever. It's I don't know. It's more laps. It's a race. It's it's fun. And uh, I don't know, like for me, I've got to just practice passing most of the time in them because up and up until now, I feel like my starts have pre been pretty subpar. So it's uh let me practice the first couple laps of passing but yeah i mean it's 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 fun I, I enjoy it and it's you know it's cool to you know you're racing for a big prize no no points or anything you just let it hang out and uh just go have fun with the boys mm -hmm. and and girls yeah true and girls um yeah. so this is a, for you hayden so your teammate well we'll talk about you but i was going to mention jake lewis is going to be in six races this weekend you're going to be in four in this heat are six. you or yes yeah, six that's yeah. right yes so yeah, i can talk to you about this i'm oh, sorry yeah. it took me a second i'm it, the heat's gotten to my brain too <laughs> all right so you're going to be doing six races it was jake that was almost going to do eight well he was never going to do eight but there was a possibility he was going to race in stock 1000 at one point but i guess they decided not to do that so yeah yeah so what's your situation this approach to the weekend regarding the heat are you, you going to do the jumping in a pool thing how do you deal with all this and changing uh, leathers by the way in yeah. between uh I, we don't have time between this to jump in pools or anything I, which i've never been i've never been a, a i don't know like whenever i'm, I'm whenever pool I'm, guy whenever, yes. yeah, i don't like water <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's a cat, dude. Yeah. i uh i don't know i just it's like it's 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 mm -hmm. hot yeah but it's not like it's something crazy like we we've dealt dealt with it before uh so i mean like we know what we need to do to to combat it but like whenever i'm at home you know i'm outside in it all the time in my jeans and my boots and like, i wear a lot of denim so right. <laughs> and it gets warm jeans, nose, bro. Dude. I know. Wear jeans all day today and I'm i like, wanted to put my denim shirt on too. <laughs> i was like i love it but uh <laughs> like it's i don't know I, like the heat's never really bothered me much i uh I enjoy it. Like I'd, I'd rather it be hot because whenever it's cool, like the tracks better, the tires work better, like everything, everything's better, and you know you can, everybody can ride harder. Whenever it's hot like this, like it's gonna be greasy, and and some people struggle with it, some people like it. I like it. It's uh, I don't know, like it's 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 kind of like the rain a little bit, not so much, but like it's a little bit more of a, level, a little more dirt track leveling factor, yeah, and, finesse, and so like people it's easier to make mistakes whenever it's greasy it's hot out there so i i prefer it hot like i want it to be hot I, the hotter the better uh you know people get tired and everything and yeah for i don't know for some reason i've never had a big problem with it so i like it let's bring it okay so medallia superbike um uh steel commander stock 1000 mission king of the baggers of the three of those are you feeling a certain way? Do you are you putting an emphasis on any of the three? Uh, do you approach them all the same way? Are they all three equally important to you? Which one is the most fun? Tell me if you they're, could. They're all equally important to me. Like like sewer bike, I grew I grew up watching sewer bike racing. Like yes. I didn't grow up watching bagger racing. So like the sewer bikes, like that's for for me that's top priority because that's I've always wanted to be a sewer bike racer. And, uh, and you know, my bike isn't the best on the grid. So I want to, if I can be up there with some of the front guys, that's, that's what I want to do. But, uh, <laughs> I, I'm in the hunt for the championship in mission King of baggers, um, eight points back going into this weekend for stock thousand. And 
they're this is the last two races of the weekend yes or of the year so uh stock is a big big one because i just i just i want to i just want to win that win the championship i feel like uh we had a couple things go wrong last year and i didn't get it and uh this year i felt like it was more mine than last year and then we had some issues at the beginning of the year and so now i'm back into it and i wasn't ex- i was kind of ready to call it quits before brainerd and uh so I don't know. I, I put an emphasis on all of them. Like they're all they're all equally important to me. Sewer bike, obviously, I'm not going for a title or anything. So if the last couple laps of the race I'm by myself, I'm gonna chill out mm-hmm. and save a little bit for for the bagger stuff. And uh, luckily, the bagger races aren't like they're not super taxing. Like the bikes, you can't really override the bikes, so you can't really like at least for me. I I feel like I can't wear myself out riding one because if you you can over push them pretty easy and and tuck the front or do whatever and it's going to cost you and so uh like luckily the baggers aren't super taxing i feel like the sewer bikes by far the most taxing of the one of all of them uh and then stock it's a shorter race but it's still not too bad so really like the sewer bike if if i'm by myself i'm a little bit more happy because i don't have to push those last couple laps but if i'm in a battle i don't like giving up so I'm going to keep going and I'll wear myself out if I have to, but it's uh, I don't know. It's, I enjoy it. Like I, I love doing all the classes. The more classes I can do, the better. I don't know. On Sunday, the last bagger race, I'll feel the best I have all weekend on the bike. So it's, I don't know. It's weird. Once wow. I'm, once I'm so wore out, it's like, I can't get any worse. So I start riding good. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> James, it, when you're riding these things, is it, is it mainly thinking about the front? that like where things can go wrong. I mean, we've seen Jeremy McWilliams' big slide, but that's. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> luckily the Harley has been pretty, it's, they've done such a good job and, you know, it's a testament Kyle and Harley. They, the bikes, I think our chassis and the Harley is really, really good. It's, we say it all the time, man. And I mean, until Kyle high sided on one at Brainerd last year, it's, it was pretty like, I would say pretty impossible to high side them. Like if you had any dirt track skills, like, Dude, it's just like so hard because they so they float so long. It's pretty hard to get them to like a snap. They don't ever. I've never had one snap on me really ever. Um, Daytona. Yeah, dude. yeah. Oh, Daytona. That, that was, was wild. Say. That was. Crazy. Oh, we want to thank you for that too. Yeah, it, it does it well really every time. Right, every right. time we pretty run safe. it, it'll be like Kyle's bike catching yeah. on fire. We'll run it for the next twenty years. Yeah, oh yeah, dude. Just keep, <laughs> yeah. keep tagging me. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> other than that, I think like the front. As well as is it's it's been really good. I think Brainerd was probably the first time it got greasy for me where I actually was folding the front on my knee and I was like, Whoa, okay, like we can actually tuck this thing pretty good. I have only I only crashed a uh jersey on it um behind Fonger when this thing was blowing water or whatever out. But other than that, I mean they're they're pretty good. So I don't really worry too much about it. Like I think Hayden said it's going to be greasy here. I we can all attest that's probably going to be moving around a bit. But the dirt track background, we all have dirt track backgrounds, so we all can let the bike move around and do its thing. So I think it's going to be one of those where if you're out front and kind of get gone, it's going to be tough to close a gap. And it also is, is if you start slowing down, a lot of people are going to start catching you quick. Kyle, speaking of the bike catching on fire, I wasn't going to go back that far, but that was super bike. And thank you for doing having that. Make, You're welcome. Yeah, it's been great. Every time we run it, I mean, it's it's fantastic for us. But let's talk about super bike. Do you? Uh, let's talk about the Ducati later on. You having your own pro- program? Yeah. It was a lot. But do you miss any aspects of that? Do you miss no. being in super bike? No, I I definitely miss racing super bike. Um, hmm. It's particularly tough on weekends when we don't have baggers and I'm just at home watching Moto America Live Plus and like, yeah, I definitely wish I could get out there. But, um, you know, I'm I'm really happy and and in a very good place with this Harley Davidson program. And it's always been my goal to develop the Harley to the point where it can act like a super bike, because I know that that's where it'll be its fastest. And I know that you know, that's where my experience in Superbike can pay off. So that's always been my my goal is to make this bike good enough to where, you know, it kind of satiates that, you know, desire to ride something to that level. And we're, we're getting there. But um, yeah, I mean, fortunately, last year, I, I 
did both for a couple rounds where I got those fill-in rides. And I thought at the end of 2021, when I stopped my own team, that I was like, man, this could have been my last superbike race. And that was kind of a tough pill to swallow. But because like Hayden said, he grew up watching superbike. He wants to be a superbike racer. It's the same thing. That's all I chase for my whole career. And But particularly that fill-in ride with Titlers when we got on the podium at Atlanta. Yeah. For me to miss one round, which was Coda last year, watch Superbike from the fence, and immediately second round get a fill in and put it on the podium, it was like it was kind of like a, it was, it solidified my decision. It validated, you know, my decision to go to Baggers. It kind of gave me some closure, if you will. You yeah. know, even though that that door might not be right. closed, I may end up right. back in Superbike someday, but. Um, it just gave me a lot of relief when I had that result and just kind of reinforced that I'm on the right path. So I'm going to put you on the spot on this one too. Your teammate. Oh, I was just going to bring that up. Oh, you want to bring it up? No, go ahead. Your teammate's having a tough year and yeah. he's your brother. Can you, it doesn't seem like anything's different. I, I don't get it. Is it a luck yeah. thing? What's going on? There's definitely been some luck, especially early in the year. You know, he, was leading that you know i i had an engine failure he was leading i guess part of that race and also had an engine failure and then he had another mechanical failure on the clutch side of things in race two and he walked out of daytona with zero points and zero money you know just completely empty-handed to start the year and i think with him doing both programs and everything it just kind of you know he kind of fell into a little bit of a rut and he's not really been able to pull himself out of it. He had pretty good run going at uh, Laguna, good qualifying, got back in the challenge. And yeah, he's just, he's not found the feeling that he had. He's been struggling and there's a lot of moving parts in racing in general. And, you know, sometimes not everything's adding up, but, um, you know, we've been working with him, doing what we can to get him that comfort again and that confidence that I know I know he has and he's shown. I mean, he can win in this class. He's He can put it on pole in this class. We all believe that he can do it. Um, I think he just needs to believe it himself. Does, does you find, do you find that stressful? Like, I don't have a brother, but like my son, like if we play golf, especially when he was younger, I'd be like more worried about him having a good time and playing well than myself. You know what I mean? You're like, Oh God, you just want the best for your kid. It, it, you got to have that feeling a little bit with your brother too. Right. I mean, you got to be like, Oh, how's, how's Travis doing? How's. Yeah, uh, for sure. And you know, we work <laughs> together as teammates, probably different than most teammates would because we're, you know, we're brothers and we understand each other. And, you know, I've done as much as I can to, to give him, you know, at least my path and not, not to say that, you know, the way I do things works for anybody else, but you know, that I just, Hey, this is what I'm doing on the bike, whether we're looking at data or just thinking about a certain part of the racetrack. And yeah, it can be a little bit stressful, but you know, I've always had to compartmentalize things, you know, in racing, whether I was running a team or doing whatever. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at, uh, you know, focusing on the task at hand when I'm called upon it. So James Rispoli, I think, well, I, we could say this of all three of you guys, and you mentioned it, James, that you guys are all have a dirt track background. And, you know, Hayden is recently, this year, I think you did did some flat track earlier on yeah, in the season. Yeah, I, I, I was going to do a couple of the AFT races, and Didn't a couple get, of them didn't work out. Like, I had some other stuff that ended up coming up, but, yeah. yeah. You got kicked out for just roughing up some of the rookies. Yeah, I was. I was yeah, getting, they don't want like to in trouble. A bunch of kids, yeah, man. But so, so anyway, so James, this question is pointed to you as far as AFT goes or flat track. Are you? Do you ever see yourself going back there and racing in that full time again, or do you think this is your home now? Where, where do you think your career is going to go? I mean, obviously, I think with the baggers doing and doing so well in the baggers, I would expect that. I hope that I would have a seat here in the Bagger Series, and uh, that's my focus right now is to win the championship and then try to fulfill that. Um, obviously, uh, these guys have both spoke about it. like we grew up for Superbike, and that's something it's never going to get like solidified. But you know, I did race in, in Superbike and BSB and accomplished a lot of goals that I yes. wanted to do. Um, so yeah, it's it's a tough one. Both factories seem to be moving further away from dirt track at the moment. 
Uh, and you know, there's only like KTM really in there and there's a couple other privateer teams running some, uh, manufacturer support. So it's pretty tough to get on those seats. Um, so yeah, I think at the moment, like the, it's full force to go in to Moto America and stay here. Um, you know, I'm kind of somewhat sick of stacking 25 tear offs on and getting dirty and all my kit getting dirty and have to clean it. So I would say that I'm probably here and you got me to, to stay for a while, uh, as long as they'll have me. So yeah, I mean, it's, I love dirt track. It's in my blood. Um, and if an opportunity came up, I would definitely go back, but, uh, I, I would try to be more around, uh, the, the bigger tracks and the good facilities, you know, Red Mile and Springfield. Like I love those tracks and I do really, really well there. And I would try to be like more of a mile guy. Okay. All right. Well, we ran out of time, Paul. Um, so. but it was a good episode. It's not easy to have three guys on, I just but cut it. I think if we're going to have three guys on, these are the three guys to have on for sure. So, uh, big happenings this weekend at the circuit of the Americas with mission King of the baggers and wish you guys all luck and, and Hayden wish you well. And, uh, medallia Superbike as well as, um, steel commander stock 1000 i can't even keep it straight in my head the fact that you got so many you're going but um good Thanks. luck to you on that and you guys as well and and of course you're going to take the fight to new jersey for the next round in the final round of the season in mission king of the baggers as well so hope so um yeah it'll hope be good so. to see so thanks for being on with us thanks guys thank thanks. you guys